So in this chicken coop, uh, sorry, this I, did, I don't know what's going on. It seems like there's a 10 minute limit on this. Um, I could probably fix that, don't care, don't have time. So we'll just do it in chunks. In this chicken coop, um, there was a hen that had given, not given birth, but hatched the eggs naturally. And then uh, there's the incubator. And the point I got into that I wanted to make with the eggs is that an egg has all the nutrients it needs for that chick to get to the point where the egg hatches. When the egg hatches, you have three days uh, that it can live off of whatever it's got in its body already. And then it has to start eating and drinking. And the sooner it starts eating and drinking, the better. But you have three days. Three days is an important and interesting time frame. But um, what I wanted to say with that is God gives us enough. He, truth is very hard to see and perceive and understand and value correctly. Accurately, I should say because correctly makes you think it's a light switch, but it's not, it's a dimmer and you can get closer or further away. So, so accuracy is more, more correct than being correct. So anyway, um, you have three days. God gives us all we need. Um, what is right is always possible to, to figure out. Um, it doesn't take tons of time, it takes a lot of honesty, but it doesn't take tons of time. We have the perception and the understanding and access to him uh, sufficient to figure out what is right. As clearly as the dark is from the day. What is almost never clear is by how much. So in other words, the magnitude of any decision is very hard to understand in the moment. But the direction of a correct decision is always apparent. It's apparent through your conscience. And I wrote all about this in, in the book on repentance, which you absolutely should read if you have not. Um, and if one book is too much for you to think about, start on chapter five, I think. Um, okay, but read the whole thing. So um, so the, the natural chicken, uh, the, the broody hen, uh, she had these chicks in a bucket. And we thought, well, that's great because incubators take time and money and whatever. Um, but like the natural way is better, right? Well, here's the thing about that hen is as soon as the chicks hatch, we were monitoring it. So we had, we had discovered this. I discovered this about, um, the first six hours after they hatched. Um, and then, uh, she started pecking these chicks, right? She wasn't, she had crushed one and she was just really crazy. So, uh, I took her out and I took the chicks and I put them in the, the little setup I had to take care of freshly hatched chicks. And we made sure they got food and water because, I mean, the hen was not only not taking care of that, but she was uh, sitting on them and pecking them and whatever. So sometimes what's sufficient for the beginning right after you hatch or for right now, wherever you are, is not ideal for what comes next. OK, and if you don't think chickens are a sufficient learning tool, then maybe you should wonder why. Jesus said so often that, that he would gather us as a hen gathers chicks under her wings, which is, if you've seen that, it's very powerful imagery. It's very powerful imagery. So that, that chicken will give its life. Um, even with, with its little pea brain, it has enough instinct or whatever else to shelter those chicks, even if it costs her her life, if a dog attacks that hen. It won't even think about it, it'll give its life. For those chicks um, and that the environment there it's warm it's safe um, anyway we could talk about that I'm not going to but the, the point is that God gives us these stairs and he provides the next step the next step the next step so he always gives us sufficient information and then we make the decision and then we're in the next situation where we've grown and we have access to greater resources and we grow and we grow towards him. So back to these lepers. They had enough information to make the correct decision here. And they did. And so they asked him to be healed. And he said, go, to, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. So obviously they believed that Jesus was going to heal them. A better faith would have been to believe that whatever Jesus was leading them towards was better than whatever they had before. 
That's a more mature level of faith. But they wanted to be healed, and they assumed that in going to the priest, this was part of being healed. Now, ancient Israelites were way better at this sort of thing than us, because if it's not super obvious to us that what we're being asked to do is exactly what we'll deliver, exactly what we're asking for, we don't do it, right? And I should say people don't do it because I do it, but um, it wasn't always that way. So um, you have to grow out of that. That's little kindergarten challenge type stuff. If you really believe that God is the su supremacy of goodness, he's not only good, he is the very definition. By definition, he is the apex of good. He is the paragon of good. He is the definition of good. There's nothing better than God. And everything he gives you because he loves you more than you love yourself. Everything he sends your way is better than anything you could have otherwise. It's, that is the way it is. And when you really believe that, you know, you can say you believe in Jesus. If you really believe in Jesus, you will accept all things from him, no matter how much they hurt in the moment or how different they are from what you say you want. You'll want him more than anything else. And this is why these videos are really hard to make, because when I'm writing, I can, I can hit pause and go talk about this thing and go talk about that thing. Um, in the videos, everything from God is interconnected. All things are interconnected. They're intertwined like pieces of yarn. You can't just take one thread out and talk about that thread without a lot of skill. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's more than I have, I guess. Um, but anyway, um, you touch one thing, you touch it all. And it's very important to trust God unconditionally, um, unconditionally, holding nothing back because it doesn't matter what you want. What you should want is God and whatever he wants. And if it's anything less than that, he will still, he will, he will do anything he can to get anything good into your life that you will accept. But we limit him so much and we need to stop. And we need to stop. I wrote a blog post the other day that was about not running fast enough. He wants to show you how to run fast enough. And it's not about uh, surviving or getting goodies. You know, the faith of most people is, I believe in Jesus as long as he gives me what I want. Um, that's not what it's about. It's about getting what he knows you could have and what you're not smart enough or courageous enough or good enough to appreciate right now. And you're none of those things enough to even know it exists. Um, I have not seen what God has prepared for those who love him. Your mortal eye has not seen it. Your eye of faith can see it, and he will show you. But the way he has of showing you is more than what most people can bear. They don't have the faith. He has things to show us and tell us that we can't bear right now. And the only way to get there is to trust in him and he can take us to the place where he can show us. Um, so he was trying to do that with these lepers. You might not understand this, but Jesus has never done a miracle solely for the purpose of alleviating suffering. That was never the main purpose of any of it. And it never is. And this is one reason that so few people experience them today. It's not because he has some some restriction on that there's some uh some edict in heaven that they have to pause or whatever no nope, he has not changed we have changed he has not changed if you want miracles in your life one way you can make that happen is by um, getting out of his way just like all the good things he wants to send in your life just get out of his way just let him do what he needs to do and, and go with him instead of blocking him let him lead you and you follow him don't try to get him to follow you. He's not going to. And if you feel like you're doing that, all you're doing is, is just putting this huge filter on all the stuff he wants to give you. All the, the, the 
characteristics he wants you to become. You're putting a huge filter on that. And that little tiny part he squeezes through, you're celebrating that as if you have some great thing. And you do. It's much greater than what the world can provide. But it is nothing compared to what he has to give you. I better get back to this. So these lepers, right? All right. So they, they go on their way. And sure enough, they don't even have to get there yet. These, these Old Testament folks and New Testament folks, the ancient Israelites, they were well versed in symbolism and this idea that prophets made you do weird things in order to get the goodies, right? So um, when Naaman the Syrian wanted to be healed of leprosy, he had to go bathe in the Jordan River a bunch of times. And, um, you know, he protested about this because he was not an Israelite and it was a weird thing. He wasn't used to prophets asking people to do weird things. But the Israelites, they knew. 